Welcome to Nova's hierarchy of microphones or the shooter producers microphone menu. Now the one that I'm starting you with is the absolute worst and uh, there's a good reason for that. I've used the internal microphone on this camera. Now the camera I'm using is the Blackmagic Cinema camera. It has a stereo inbuilt microphone. The microphones are located just underneath the lens. Now through a pair of headphones you'd probably hear the camera fan through this television you'll probably find that it probably doesn't sound too bad. Now the trick is here, there's two tricks with this particular scenario that I've got going on here. The first trick is this, I'm in quite in a good acoustic space, I don't know if you can see behind me but there's some acoustic tiles up etc. This is my little post production studio that's now been used by my teenage son as his bedroom at the moment. Um, so it's actually quite a good acoustic space. In a much more live acoustic space you'd find that the results you're getting from this internal microphone wouldn't be as good, they'd sound very echoey because you'd be distant from the microphone. And that's trick number two. I've got quite a wide lens on here, I'm shooting at about 17mm, so I'm quite close to the camera. I'm only about, uh, I'd say about 1.2 to 1.5 metres away. So the results actually for the internal camera mic are quite legible. You wouldn't call them broadcast quality, you wouldn't call it cinema quality by any stretch of the imagination. But it does go to show that in a pinch, the internal microphones on the camera, if you're telling a story, can get you audio that can be quite useful. So the tricks here are try and get into a situation where the acoustic space is quite good, it's not too echoey, there's not too much environmental noise, there's not too many factors that are going to interfere with the sound quality. And the second thing is get your, your uh, subject as close to the camera as you possibly can. That's going to make all the difference, the internal camera mic not completely useless but very close okay menu item number two the handheld microphone old school like we're watching 70s news huh don't discount the handheld microphone they are a really useful tool and they're super inexpensive this one here is a 25 dollar cable this mic's about less than less than 200 dollars it's a road australian made one um very very good microphone and the quality that you'll get out of it is pretty much as good audio quality as you could possibly get from systems costing you thousands of dollars more money and the reason why look where the microphone is it's right next to my gob sounds fantastic doesn't it they're a really useful tool in your kit a handheld microphone of course the big downside is they're very visible. They do take away the magic of television making. This sort of idea that we can't see the tools that actually create television. But, very, very useful. Um, I mean, you can hold it up in front of an interview subject, get great quality sound in a really noisy environment. I mean, you've seen reporters using these at footy games, etc., etc., and being able to be heard perfectly well. Because of this, look how close I am to this microphone capsule. It's a really good way of recording sound. Of course, not overly practical for a lot of scenarios, but a very good tool to have in your kit for vox pops, for interviews, etc., etc., and possibly in some ways, maybe a little bit easier to uh, deal with than a boom microphone. So, um, an idea might be is to just hold the microphone out of shot. Now, obviously the quality isn't going to be quite as good. I'm not sure if it's out of shot. I'm shooting here by myself, so <laughs> it may be still in shot, but you get the idea. If you can frame that microphone out, you'll still get quite a good result, and it's quite still quite close to my mouth, but nothing sounds as good as it does up here. Now, these microphones could also be used on a boom overhead if you didn't have a shotgun, for example. Um, you know, all of these things can be used in a pinch, could be mounted on a camera. The thing about the pattern on these type of microphones is they're called a cardioid pattern. Now, You'll, we'll talk a lot more about patterns in the class today, but there's three basic types of patterns. And this one sort of fits somewhere in the middle between hearing everything, very wide type of pattern, and a very narrow pattern of what we call a shotgun style microphone. So this one sort of sits in the middle. So when it's whilst up to your mouth, it's quite good at excluding other sounds. When it's further away, you'll find that you'll hear the rest of the world quite well. So not necessarily as useful as it could be. The handheld microphone. A very useful tool in your sound kit. Menu item number three. 
the camera mounted shotgun microphone. Probably the most commonly seen scenario for a shooter producer. The little fluffy covered microphone on the top of your camera. Now, when it's mounted on top of the camera, it's a really useful tool. When you're out and about and you're getting stuff and you're shooting, it means you're getting good quality sound all the time. But when you're dealing with an interview type scenario, there are obvious problems. The first one being, anything mounted onto the camera is going to get all of the camera associated noise, the fans of the camera, just your general fiddling and moving around with the camera, etc, etc. So, obviously it's not as optimum as getting the microphone over the top, which I'll explain in a moment. The second thing about it is just that distance away. So even though I'm in quite a good acoustic space here, so it's probably sounding not too bad to you, in a more typical environment, it would sound very live, very distant, very echoey. Um, you'd hear the sound of the environment, etc, etc. Now, I'm going to show you some great mounting and wind protection techniques, but you know, the camera mounted shotgun microphone, probably the first valid professional choice for your shooter producer. Menu option number four, the boom mounted shotgun microphone. Now about 30 centimeters above my head and just out of frame, hopefully, because I'm doing this by myself, um, there's a shotgun microphone mounted on a boom arm. Um, and the point of this basically is getting that microphone as close to my mouth as possible. Talking about what we were talking about before, the closer it is, the less environmental noise we have to deal with, the less echoes we have to deal with. Getting that microphone in close is the number one thing that we are trying to do when we're trying to record good sound. Obviously, we want to have the microphone just out of shot. Um, there's two other things to consider as well. The trouble with this scenario is, unlike on a film set where the microphone is mounted on a boom and operated by somebody who's going to be moving that microphone around with your performer, when your performer leans forward, the results aren't quite as good. So you've got to place the microphone in a place where it's going to sound the best, which is basically in front of the person pointed at them. And you've got to maybe compensate a little bit by taking it a little bit further away to allow for the fact that they are going to move around when they talk. But you're going to have to be mindful of the fact that they will move around. And if they have leant forward, you've got to ask them to sit back again because the quality is not going to be as good. So hopefully you'll hear that in your headphones and be reminded, but just remember that as well. The boom mounted shotgun microphone, Hollywood standard. It's as good as it gets, kids. Okay, menu item number five, the radio transmitted Lavalier microphone or radio mic. Basically, I've got a little tiny microphone called a Lavalier or lav mic taped to the inside of my t-shirt. And trust me, we're gonna spend lots of time today on doing the best ways of doing that and the problems that that can happen and all those type of things. But that's what's happening. It's going into a radio transmitter that's transmitting through the airwaves to the radio receiver and then being recorded onto the camera. Now, really great advantages of the radio microphone. One being, it doesn't matter where I move around, I can walk, I can talk, I can wave my arms wildly in the air and the sound will always be about the same distance away from my mouth. Talking about getting back to that whole thing of getting a microphone as close to the mouth as possible is probably your number one uh, aid in getting great sound to your camera. Um, the other advantage of the radio mic as well is, is that you can have four or five or six or seven or 20 million people on radio mics and each one will be recorded individually onto tracks and you know all the advantages that can go along with that. We can fix it up in post, we can bring up levels, all those type of things as opposed to a shotgun that's covering a number of different people. Um, there are many disadvantages of radio mic. Um, obviously it's a tiny little microphone so the sound quality is not going to be as good as that beautiful shotgun microphone that we recorded in the previous example. And then there's all the issues with radio interference and clothing rustle and batteries running out and all those type of things. But we're going to go through that in great detail today and this is just an example of what it actually sounds like. So here it is the radio microphone in the flesh. This is the Sankin COS-11, the Lavalier head going to electrosonics transmitter, very, very high end type gear. You may not get a chance to, you know, into, uh, work with gear as good as this, um, but hopefully you will. Um, but still the, the same principles apply. A Lavalier microphone going to a radio transmitter, transmitting wirelessly to a receiver that then goes into the camera to record the sound. The radio microphone, 